Welcome back to Let's Play World of Warcraft Heroic Oculus. We are in part two of our heroic run. Uh, we are clearing the trash to the second boss. I just wanted to let you know on this first guy, you de or on this um, boss, you definitely want to clear all the drakes that are right above the boss. Um, you don't need to get those guys on the far side, but during the boss fight, one will swoop down. Um, he does call some in for the boss fight, but the other ones that aren't supposed to be in the boss fight will swoop down. So it's a good idea to go ahead and get rid of the guys right above them um, so that they don't aggro because of how close you are to them. Now this boss, you can get kind of tricky. Um, you want to keep him in the center because he's going to put those beams out. And wherever those beams are, after about five seconds, they're going to blow like that. And they're going to, I guess, overcharge or something like that. And they do a lot of damage to anybody that's standing within them. So if you tank them in the middle... And your healer and all your DPS have a chance and they can move out of the way before he does that supercharged one. Um, he also has this beam of light that comes down here. Um, it can do a lot of heavy damage where it's at, so make sure that you move out of that. Um, that's really it. Just the um, those beams coming from the outside and that heavy light coming through uh, are the only two things that are really going to do a lot of damage. Oh, he does put Amplify Magic. He'll put it on a random target. Uh, if you're a paladin tank, go ahead and you know help your healer out and dispel it off of him. Uh, your healer can do it too, but since he's got to be moving around a lot, if it's not a priest, uh, just kind of consider it to help him out. Because it's tank, as a tank, honestly, you don't have a lot to do on that fight. I mean, besides keep aggro, which isn't really difficult. So uh, now you're gonna fly straight up. There's no trash you gotta clear here until you land, so you don't have to worry about aggro and anything on your dragon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, now this guy I found out. You can just drop down right on top of him, and he won't summon his little ads until you uh, attack him. So just land right on top of him so you can throw your Consecrate down. Um, that works good. I didn't really do it right because uh, I lost a bunch of aggro, and my shield didn't throw when I wanted it to. But anyway, so you can land right on top of him, put your Consecrate down. There's about five or six ads every time. The problem is if you like, you know, attack them from far away and then run up to them, uh, then you got guys that are casting instead of being in your consecrate, and it's just a lot easier just to do like I'm doing here, just land right on top, consecrate. It'll automatically hit everybody as soon as they're summoned, so you can go ahead and get a free, you know, three to six hundred um, points of damage on each one before anybody even starts attacking. So that's kind of helpful. Now these elementals is kind of a pain pool because you're, they're doing magical damage, which always kind of sucks. Uh, so just kind of be careful. And make sure if you're not melee that you don't run up in there. You don't need to be that close if you're not melee. So that helps the healer out too a little bit here. And the next boss, I'm gonna go ahead and explain some of him. Even though you gotta clear three of these, um, three of these little pods. Uh, the next boss basically he has well, two different big attacks. Uh, he just does some melee, and then he does Frostbolt. He does ma mainly, I think, Frostbolt and maybe some melee. Um, and what you have to do is he throws down a Frost Bomb. He'll cast it, and you'll see it. He throws down a Frost Bomb, and it covers a, a pretty big area with uh, ice, I guess, and it slows everybody down. Well, when you're in it, you start taking a lot of damage, and it's kind of like the Karastraza fight in Nexus, and it, the damage keeps stacking and stacking, and then all of a sudden you're taking, you know, 2,000 damage a second standing in it. So what the tank's job is to do is to try to keep aggro on them and keep on working your way, going backwards around the circle. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. You got this circular platform right here, and you're able to kite him all the way around it if you need to. Um, so as soon, as soon as we land, he won't aggro either until you actually attack him, so you can stand right there. So here he is. He's going to cast his first uh, frost bomb I was telling you about. And see, it made all the ground there uh, frozen, so you move a lot slower. And you see I have a debuff over here on the top right-hand corner. Um, I'm actually pointing to it, which doesn't help because you all can't see my hands. Okay, so, and also notice here on your left, this uh, stone piece right here that's not just scenery. That actually becomes something you can hide behind. Because here in a second, he's going to teleport to the middle. And then as soon as he does that, you want to tank him to where when he's in the middle, you can get behind one of those because it has a huge AOE 
Uh, luckily, you know, we can all take a lot of damage. It's about 18,000 damage. Eh, maybe it's less than that. Um, but just so you know, it it can be dodged by getting behind one of those pillars. So always try to do that. Try to tank him to where you're behind that when he goes to the middle. And I think it's a time thing because you can kill him before he even goes to the middle. Uh, we just went ahead and stayed in the frost because we had a good healer, good DPS. Um, it was just easier that way. It made it go quicker. Now, as soon as you take off from here, you're going to head straight up. Be careful because uh, the last boss, Aragos, um, is flying around the middle. And if you get too close, you'll aggro him. And you got to kill these little whelplings first. They don't have a lot of hit points at all. So they're really easy to kill. Um, mainly, you want to get your strategy together here before you attack them. But someone accidentally aggroed them while we were um, messing around with these little drakes. So... Here the boss fight, I think, started right here. Yep, already started. Now basically, okay, you've got three different kinds of drakes. Your healer is going to be putting three poisons, uh, three stacks of poison on them. And then you each every uh, color gets a new ability when the boss fight starts. The third one for the green drake is that he can heal another drake, but only by losing his own hit points. But if, you're, if you have poisons on the target, you get hit points back. So... You can heal yourself with your poisons while you heal another player. Okay, the tank has three abilities. He has one that is a beam that bounces around, hits um, a bunch of enemies, so he can kill the adds. Uh, the second one is a shield that anybody close to him, you want to stay close to the tank on this one. Anybody close to him gets a fire shield, and all the damage is redirected to the red drake. And he also has a oh shoot, what is it? I had it and I forgot. Well, it's probably the most important one. Uh, let's not worry about it. Uh, then the the main thing here is that you're going to have the bronze drakes. And what they can do is called time stop. And when they time stop, it puts five stack debuff, or debuff on the target that they deal so much more damage for having five stacks on them. The way you can increase these stacks is see these beams coming out right here? If, if you are putting your beam on them, you won't do any damage to them, but you're making them more susceptible to another drake's damage. So if you have two bronze uh, putting the beam on, beam on him, then you can have one bronze DPSing him so that they're getting stacks because when their beams are on him, that stack that I was telling you about that you get five if you time stop, that goes all the way up to ten. Once you get to ten, you're maxed out. As soon as the two people holding the beams on him are at ten stacks each, they want to let the guy that's DPSing know to put his beam up. So then, boom, they release their beams and hit with their big attack and they each do like 80,000 damage a piece and based on the amount of damages how many stacks you get with the beam uh, I know this is very confusing but anyway so the third guy that just now put his beam up should get um, all 10 stacks all at once because those guys each doing 80,000 will meet that damage threshold he'll get 10 stacks and then you can just go boom 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 back forth back forth and that's if you can get in a rhythm, you can kill the guy really fast. That's how people do it with five bronze drakes. So I know I had to rush through that explanation, but I just wanted to kind of give you an overview of the instance. Uh, you know, do this instance, guys. It's, it's really not that bad. I didn't like it the first time I went because I went with a bad group. Get with your guildies. Try it out. Get good at it. Um, read up on strategies online. Uh, it's a very doable instance. Try to use what I've told you here. Hopefully it helped out a little bit. You didn't get too confused. Uh, we ended up with a 16 minute run time guys it was great it was an awesome run I just want to thank all my DPS and my healers to go with me every time uh, you guys rock I really appreciate your help uh, to make these videos and guys I hope you come back I'll be trying to post up some new videos here soon so appreciate you watching